Hello, it is Sunday, May 21st, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday crossword today, which means a very large grid and a titled puzzle stitch in time, which obviously is a play on the phrase a stitch in time saves nine. So we'll have to see how that ties into the theme. And this um, will be, well, it will have a theme, as I say. And this themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Josh Lucas, Emma Smith, Jake Rodkin, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and a new supreme benefactor. So welcome and thank you so much to the incredible Horan family. Welcome to them. Thank you for becoming a supreme benefactor and sustaining this channel, keeping this whole thing going. And um, it really does mean a lot. It's how this channel continues. And so thank you to the six of them. And thank you to you as well if you're a patron. And thank you to you if you're not and you're just watching this video. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to become a patron, you can head over to uh, patreon.com slash daily solve. Click the link in the description field. And there you can find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, like the recent Puzzle Triathlon and Mini Puzzle Speed Solve. And of course, um, as a benefactor, you can also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. All right. If you are not a pay, well, if you're a patron or not a patron, you should subscribe to the channel and uh, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Um, that is a nice, friendly chat community. Link in the description field. And all of that said, let's solve today's crossword. This is the second construction by Robert Ryan for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It's entitled Stitch in Time, and let's start solving. It's not that simple. Hmm. Don't know. I'm going to start doing these downs, these shorter downs. <laughs> it might be easier. Sharp bark. Could be a dog's bark, a sharp bark of a dog. It makes sort of, I don't know what a kind of physically sharp bark of a tree would be. Product typically typically wrapped in paraffin wax. Is it Edam cheese, maybe? That's often, so is, um, was it uh, the Bell cheese that's uh, Baby Bell? It's also typically wrapped in paraffin wax. But let's see if this looks right. O oh, so big, yes, that would be, so O oh is water in French, and big, so big water would be uh, the sea, the la mer in French. Father... Um, well, in French, that would be pair, which would fit, but um, I assume it's not. Oh, sire. There we go. In English, sire. Father. To father a child, to sire a child, for instance. Draw. Illustrate. Draw could, has so many different meanings. I don't know which I think it is. Grams in the UK. Grams in the UK. Grams could mean granny, grandmother. Uh, which in the UK could be Nan. You could refer to your grandmother as Nan Grams. That could be the answer. Let's check the crosses. It's not that simple. Oh, no, never mind us. No, I thought I saw something. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Race held annually in early March. Oh, is it the Iditarod? The um, sort of dog sled race uh, in Alaska or starts in Alaska? Is all in Alaska? Not sure. <laughs> Bigamy, legally speaking. Oh, right. Okay. So here, this connects clearly to our title, Stitch in Time, and will be relevant to the theme somehow. Bigamy, legally speaking. So we're going to take a phrase and sort of contract it by removing the G, maybe, and then that has its own meaning or creates a new phrase or something. Hmm, not really sure. Beats Electronics co-founder familiarly. Uh, Dr. Dre co-founded Beats Electronics. And Winter Olympics powerhouse, abbreviation Norway, I think is incredibly uh, dominant in the Winter Olympics. Wednesday eponym Odin. Uh, Wednesday is named for Odin, I believe. Um, and that's the, that's the derivation of that word. Oh, yes and no. Right. Okay. The thing that I thought I saw here, which I didn't ever say was yes or no. But then I was thinking, oh, that's the opposite of saying it's not that simple. Making something yes or no is making it simple. But this is yes and no. And I should have thought of that as the sort of 
converse of what I was saying. All right, to, uh, to draw something or somebody is to attract them. There we go. That's one meaning of draw that works here. A sharp bark, that is a dog's bark, it's a yip. Bigamy, legally speaking, partner in crime? I mean, I understand why it's, oh, is it just because it has an in in it? I was going to say, so I can understand why partner in crime is a sort of pun for bigamy because it's it's a sort of illegal way to marry because you're marrying multiple people simultaneously. Um, but But why do we need the in? Is it just because there's an in in it? In other words, what makes this different than if the clue were bigamy legally speaking with a question mark and it still indicates a pun but what what does it mean that that's there maybe it's just that there's an in in here and that and the the theme is just that all of these have in the word in in the middle i don't know do i maybe this is wrong maybe this is actually there's something different going on i don't know this feels like a, a, an appropriate clue though so, or a um, theme Sorry, pun. It feels like an appropriate pun. I'm going to leave it and move on for now and see, see what happens. Gotcha. Stellar as a pitching outing. No hit. You have a no hit pitching outing in baseball. Specialty segments could be niches. You could specialize in something as your niche. Liable to be lost. Something-ish. Joel's smuggling partner on HBO's The Last of Us. Uh, I've actually... I'm not seeing The Last of Us. Um, is there a way I can infer this? I doubt it. Okay. Amidst sparks as a campfire. It spits. You could sometimes refer to a campfire as spitting. Is that right? Let's see. Kind of passage. A nasal passage. There we go. That does work. Computer expert for short. IT pro. Right. Information technology professional. And liable to be lost. At risk. Ah, okay. You're at risk. You're liable to be lost. Yeah, okay. I see that. Tess, Joel's smuggling partner. Ness, Tess. Gotcha. Not. No. Bess. <laughs> Actually, several names that fit here. I don't know. Jess. Surprising number of names fit that that uh, pattern. Right hand, your aide, your right hand, your assistant. Big box store with a labyrinthine layout. Ikea certainly meets that description. Blackmail, ammunition, dirt. I've got dirt on you and I'm going to blackmail you with it. Furnish with an income to employ, no, to endow. You could leave an endowment or you could endow an organization, furnish it with an income. Where copy editors are working, right, a desk. Something in desk. Oh, sorry. I just realized what this is. It's not partner in crime. I mean, it, it's it's alluding to that that phrase, but it's a part. Bigamy is a partner in crime. I see. I right. That makes more sense because that matches bigamy as a noun as opposed. To, well, I was saying partner in crime, but I was thinking of it as a verb to partner in crime. Um, or your partner in crime, but your partner in crime wouldn't be bigamy. That would be your, your, one of your spouses. So, okay. I see. So part, it's a partner in crime and this is a something in desk. <laughs> so what is that? Copy editors are working at the, I'm not sure. Gotcha. No, I still don't see that. Entertainers, Carvey and Delena. Dana Carvey, stand-up comedian. Dana Delaney, I'm not sure I know. A certain legal guardian. I mean, the, the word yesterday fits in here, but I don't know why that would be relevant at all. Uh, oh, foster dad? There we go. Okay. Gotcha. No. Noted. There it is. It is Tess. Okay. Gotcha. Noted. I see. All right. B equivalent. Uh, well, musically, the equivalent of, a, of the note B could be a C flat. Okay. Booze is... Uh, 
Who's is? I'm surprised I can't think of that, but I can't seem to. Auction unit could be a lot. You could have lots in an auction of, of goods. Lenovo competitor, the official, I think, computer manufacturer of the, of the New York Times crossword is Acer. So there we go. Someone suggested that recently, and I think they're right. Boo, oh, hooch. There we go. Okay. Booze, hooch. Those are both sort of slangy ways to refer to alcohol. And, oh, the check-in desk, right? Copy editor. So check-in desk is, a, a, on its in its own right, is a phrase. Um, you know, you could have a check-in desk at an, I don't know, an airport or something. Uh, but also, in this kind of slangy, contracted way, copy editors work at the check-in desk, which is where they do their checking or their check-in. All right. Acid alcohol compound is an ester, I suppose. That is right. I have seen that before. One could be veiled, empty or veiled, a threat, an empty threat or a veiled threat. One tendon to reply quickly. And comprehensive report. Does it mean as in a comprehensive school? Like a primary school, state school, is that what it means? Or is it some... Oh, maybe it means comprehensive as in I comprehend, I understand. I, as in yes, I'm not sure. Shade could be a tint, maybe, of color. Oxford, e.g., it's a school, it's a shoe, it's, uh, it's probably a number of other things. What else is in Oxford? I don't know. It's a school and a shoe, certainly. A school doesn't fit. I don't think I can't think of any synonym for school that fits. It could be shoe could fit in theory. Oh, the comprehensive report could be aha. It is, it is an exc exclamation of um, comprehension. That's what that's going. That's what's going on there. And it's it is certainly punny. Hence the question mark. So let's try shoe and see if that works. One to oh, right. One tendon to reply quickly. I feel as though I'm not getting any better at solving these. Um, respond in? Oh, a respond in kind. There we go. So you could respond in kind, or you could be the responding kind, someone who responds quickly. But in this case, a respond in kind. This is very clever. All right. And a shade is a tone. There we go. Same idea. But different word. Uh, the Simpsons teacher looks like Crabapple, but I, I do remember this is... Edna Krabappel, I think. Edna Krabappel, the teacher from The Simpsons. Animal that resembles a raccoon more than a bear, despite its name. A something panda. Um, what kind of... A red... Oh, a red panda. It does look more like a raccoon. Um, yeah, they're very cute. Surf sound. The roar of the surf, people often say. And it is a roar in the ocean. Grammy-nominated sister of Aretha. So this would be Aretha Franklin's sister. I'm sure I've heard of this person, but I can't think offhand. Crumbly cake topping. Is it Oreo? <laughs> do, you, do you top a cake with Oreo? I mean, that is the official snack biscuit of the New York Times crossword. Um, do I think that's the answer, though? Let's try it. Yawning. Uh, yawning. Open, it's... I'm not sure. Church chorus. Amens? Oh, Irma Franklin. Irm, Irma or Irma Franklin. Okay. Um, I wouldn't have gotten that without any crosses, but that is familiar now that I see it. Uh, Outcast EG, a rap duo? Yeah, that fits. Oh, Maybe not. Yawning. Oh, I spelled Oreo incorrectly. Deep. Okay. So you could have a yawning chasm, a deep chasm, for instance, uh, in the earth or something like that. Annual Indie Festival. Is it summer something? Is summer dew? Is that a thing? That kind of is, uh, strikes a I don't know. I, I might be making that up. I'm not sure. Like all animal, animals in the genus Equus, uniquely. I mean, that's horses. Um, what does that mean, uniquely? I'm not sure what that's going for. Concave bodily features. Irises? 
I think that's probably right. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's not. I can never remember which part of your eye is actually the um, the lens bit. It's probably not the iris. Form all organization. Uh, what is that? Some sort of pun, but I can't figure it out. Big blank. That's pretty vague. Uh, Japanese fried pork cutlet tonkatsu. There we go. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I just noticed this 2022 horror sci-fi film co-starring Daniel Kaluuya. That's nope. So I'm just going to put it in because I saw the saw the clue and I recognized it. Uh, that's the Jordan Peele film. J Pearl button coating. Naker. Um, is the material that material? Uh, world capital closest to Null Island. Oh, interesting. Zero degrees north, zero degrees east. I I'm not sure offhand. That's really interesting, though. Ribbed. Joked around, maybe? Could be ribbed in a physical sense, like a sort of jacket or something, or it could be ribbed as in kitted somebody, that sort of thing. I don't know. Oh, wait. Sorry, I just also saw this snowy bird. A snowy egret is a bird. So I'm going to put that in. And that is a compound clue with this one. Well, sort of. It's referenced by this one. A hiding spot for a 124 across. Oh, the reeds. You, you always sort of see egrets in marshy, reedy marshes, things like that. I was going to say marshy reeds, which makes a bit less sense, but sort of makes sense. Very informally. Uber. All right. So this is this is uber exciting. It's it's very exciting in a sort of informal way. Finance in Broadway shows. Right. Okay. Back in, I'm wondering if it's backing as in providing backing to back in, back in the, back in the, <laughs> I'm not sure. So the phrase will be back in the something, but what we're going to be doing is backing the, I don't know, maybe it's not the, back in action, back in, I'm just not seeing it. Uh, marginally, a bit or a tad. A tad would allow this to be the. So what, it, game, oh no, but it's not. Game with plus two and plus four cards. That, that's probably Uno, right? So, so maybe I don't know if that's a bit or a tad. Held session as a council. You sat in session and in council. More or less. Ish, you could say that more or less. It's true, ish. Um, back in business. Okay. Why is that Broadway shows in particular? I don't know, but, I, but it works. I mean, it, I, I understand why it works. I just don't quite understand why it's Broadway in particular. Hmm. Maybe backing financially comes from backing live theater first before it meant, I don't know, not really sure. In the sense that in the way that angel investor is was a term that referred specifically to financing Broadway shows because you'd have to be an angel to back something with such a high likelihood of failure. Um, and now that term applies to all sorts of businesses. Uh, anyway, all shook up in a stir, in a... Hmm. That would, oh, this is in a bit. So fully is to the max, I suppose. Relations, quotation marks, and is sex. So that's a that's euphemistically referring to sex as relations in a sort of winky way, I suppose. All right. Set of sheets is a ream of paper. Donde esta in Spanish. All right. Uh, where is, right, I think. And... All shook up. Oh, I'm in a state. I'm all shook up. Right. Okay. So diplomatic agreement is an entente, maybe. Diplomatic agreement between states, perhaps. And before poetically is air. So a way that um, it's a you know, contraction of, well, it's, it is, I suppose, not a contraction, but it is, does mean before in a poetic sort of way. Item on a wish list, a gift, I suppose. Is that right? Mess up. 
and bred an Italian grandmother might have made. I don't know, maybe this isn't gift. I wonder if this is lira, because, so obviously the, the current Italian currency is the euro as a member of the eurozone, but an Italian grandmother, therefore, in other words, referring to somebody um, old enough to predate the lira, although you don't have to be very old to, or to, to predate the euro, you don't need to be very old to predate the euro, um, might have used a different bread, bread meaning money in this case. So I wonder if that's what that's getting at. Item on a wish list. School near, near the Getty Center. UCLA, maybe? I think the Getty Center is in Los Angeles. Similar to, and yeah, that could be akin to, Right, okay, this is looking good. Item on a wish list, a want. Okay, it's straightforward. Your list of wants, your list of wishes. To mess up is to screw up. First time offense, so to speak, is strike one. So the sort of three strikes and you're out sort of law that um, was referenced in the US all the time. Um, at least it used to be. Uh, I know, to be honest, I think it sort of predates my political consciousness just because of my age. So I, I couldn't actually tell you exactly the details of it. Uh, but it's something to do with, with prison sentencing being harsher after sort of three offenses, I believe. Anyway, preach. And sailor's rear is the stern of a ship, maybe? And preach. I don't know. I mean, you want you want it to be sort of amen or something like that. Preach, amen, but I'm not sure. Okay, ribbed. Oh, mocked. Oh, right, okay, so it was sort of kidded somebody. Oh, Accra. Okay. Null Island. I wonder what, who, I wonder who governs Null Island, who, you know, what state is sort of control in control of it. I don't think I'm familiar with that, that island, I guess. Uh, some cross-references in a research paper informally. Um, opposites, something citations, informally. That sort of looks familiar, but I, I don't remember what the op stands for. Maybe I never knew. I don't know. Is it, This might not be right, though. I might be making this up. Statute regulating sur 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 surrogacy. Oh, mother and... Well, Mothering Day is a holiday here in the UK. It's the UK equivalent of Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday. But I don't think, it doesn't really, Mother, it doesn't sound like any, anything. Mothering, Mothering. Oh, oh, mother-in-law, right, right. I needed to, sorry. The original, sorry, I was thinking about it as though the original phrase had the G, but no, it's our phrase, our, our jokey phrase that would in theory have the G. The original phrase doesn't. So mother-in-law is a phrase unto itself. A mother-in-law or a mothering law could be a statute re regulating or regulating surrogacy. There we go. All right. Van's old blank, classic sneaker school, maybe? I, I think I'm just inferring this is the case because it says classic sneaker and you can imagine a kind of retro sneaker brand branding itself old school spelled this way to make it fit in, to, in the grid. But I, I don't know if that's, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Equipment used to make pizza slices or French fries. Why are those in quotation marks? What does that mean? Obviously not referring to the food items, or they wouldn't be in quotation marks. Uh, Cooper's raw material. So a Cooper makes barrels out of oak, perhaps. And heroine of Disney's The Princess and the Frog. Um, Tiana. This just came up the other day, actually. Okay. Hastily hung, maybe. A skew, maybe a, a sort of painting or banner is a skew because it was hastily hung. Oh, skis, right. Okay, I do remember this. This is... This is taught to beginner skiers to teach them uh, how to um, position their skis to, in the case of pizza slices, slow down, or in the case of French fries, to sort of go straight and gain downhill speed. 
All right, spell out in Spanish. Well, you have a spell out. In other words, you have some time spent unconscious in a siesta, a nap in Spanish. Georgian and Edwardian for two eras. Georgian era, Edwardian era, that seems straightforward enough. Uh, named for British monarchs. Uh, French agreement. Um, we, oh, just we, yes. Just yes for, we for yes. All right, France before it was France. Gaul. Um, and the Roman invasion and everything else. Comfy, snug, and Brussels administrative official informally, a Eurocrat. So um, people in the, the Brussels bubble as it's, sort of referred to in political reporting in the in the EU. Um, uh, Eurocrats, so European bureaucrats, portmanteau. Cracked open, a door, for instance, could be ajar. And New York City Gallery, the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. An irritating sort, maybe a gnat. Although this doesn't look very good, does it? Maybe a hmm, pitch tense, say, and camp, you could... Set up camp and camp, and an irritating sort is a pest. There we go. That's it. Classic Hasbro toy that debuted in 1964. It must be the little G.I. Joe action figures. And Super Bowl, uh, what, 56 winners. <laughs> I've, I figured that out as though that was going to help me solve this. I have no idea who won any specific Super Bowl. Uh, but it looks like Rams. At least I recognize the name, the Rams. So hopefully that's the answer. I think it is. Bubbles feature in comic book dialogue, right? Here's another one of these. Oh, well, it'll be something in circles, right? So, oh, talk uh, talk in circles. Yes, there we go. So to talk in circles, that's a phrase to mean to be sort of at odds with one another. Um, and then at loggerheads, maybe. And then uh, comic book dialogue is in talking circles, you could say, or contracted to talk in circles. When Juliet drinks the poison, Act Four of Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. Um, and if one is yet to be apprehended, one is at large. All right, uh, some protest activity. Um, well, it'll be something ing, not in, but ing in this case, not a theme clue. Um, and what? What is it? Why can't I think what this is? Reading can be found on it, or it could be reading could be found on it if it's uh, referring to a place. I'm not sure. I forgot the words. La, 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 you might sing. South African grassland, the veldt. Um, pirate fodder once. Pirate fodder once. Why is it once? In other words, what makes once needed there that wouldn't work if it simply said pirate fodder? That's what I'm not sure about. Creative types are probably ends with an S. Mouthing off. Sass? You're giving me some mouthing off. You're giving me some sass. Does that work? Because as a verb, this would need to be sassing, but mouthing off could be just a noun. Reading or reading could be f can be found on it. I don't know. I'm not getting anything over here, am I? Um, what about this? Looks like margin or something. No, beef eater, e.g., a dry gin, right? So, um, and it's got a picture of a beef eater on it, a sort of yeoman warder from the uh, Tower of London. Of those distinctive red, red uniforms. Uh, not of the cloth is uh, a lay person, so not a member of the clergy. Creative types. Oh, art artists. Okay, yeah, that's very straightforward. Don't know why I didn't didn't get to it. What about this auto racing champion Sebastian? No, oh, I don't know Loeb. I mean, that's a name. Pirate fodder once. Blank something or black something or I just don't oh I don't see it at all it's it's just yeah and then I don't see this either oh here's one products with screens or a homophone of a type of big screen uh, iPads 
homophone. I don't think I is iPads. Oh, does it mean as in pads on your eyes? Is that what? I don't think that's that's not a you wouldn't call that a big screen. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, but IMAX is though. So IMACs are computers with screens, and it's a homophone of an IMAX screen, that sort of IMAX cinema um, format. Oh, right. With, and that, that's very clever. Okay, reading can be... Oh, it is Reading. It is Reading. And it's the Thames River. Yes. Okay, which uh, is not far from me here in London. And um, Reading is can be found along the Thames. You can take you can get to Reading on the train from London pretty pretty quickly. And in fact, now you can take the Elizabeth Line, the project that was born as Crossrail and um, is a sort of east-west train line that runs through London and goes to Reading and other places. Some protest activity is chanting. There we go. Oh, pirate fought or blank CDs. Okay, so pirating music. I was wondering if maybe it could have meant pirating music, but I couldn't think of what this would be. And Right. Okay. So you would burn music onto blank CDs. Yes. Okay. That is something that did happen for a relatively short period of time in retrospect, but um, for most people anyway. But anyway, mouthing off with sass after all. So there we go. That was right. Fencing fence off is a duel. Uh, fix as a bow is re restring or re. I don't know. Shade is a hue. Oh, that's sort of like. Did we have shade? Yes, we had shade over here, and that was tone. So two different ways to say sort of color. Well, three, I suppose, including the clues. Sister channel of QVC. Um, this is the shopping network. And what's another one? Home shopping network, HSN. I think that might be, it might be real. Heading on a balance sheet. Yeah, this looks right. Assets. You could have on a balance sheet, you could have assets are positive and debts or liabilities negative. And then to fix his bow is to is to re tie retie oh retie a bow. So I'm not. I was thinking of either a violin bow or a um, a bow, an archery bow. But no, this was uh, as in a hair bow, for instance. Retie it. All right. Enjoying your meal, or I'll be serving you today, is a wait in line. Yes. So you, you know, wait in line is a phrase, and a waiting line. In other words, a waiter's. Someone who's waiting on you could could deliver such a line. There we go. Android competitors, iOS, the Apple phone operating system. Blank Gawande, best-selling author of Being Mortal. Don't think I've heard of this. What's found at the end of Citizen Kane? Um, I assume we're not meant to spoil the end of Citizen Kane here, so I won't. I won't do that because it doesn't look like it fits anyway. Spirit, one spirit, one soul. Oh, is it a silent E? Okay. I was wondering if this was going to be a uh, one of the theme clues, um, but it does not seem to be. It's just just a punny way to refer to the silent E at the end of Citizen Kane. Not pronounced Citizen Kaney. I feel as though <laughs> Citizen Kaney or something like that, or Citizen, I don't know, some would have been a sort of Disney original film in the 90s and it would have had a 13 year old girl or something in a kind of loose loose remake inspired by the she would have become I don't know student council president or something and con controlled the school in some kind of outrageous way anyway blank is like a cat it only comes to you if you ignore it uh, Jillian Flynn is that the author of Sharp Objects Jillian Flynn I've read that Blank is like a cat. It only comes to you if you ignore it. Um, I can't think what the answer is. Okay. Um, regarded suspiciously. I do you, uh, that's usually when you eye someone, it's with suspicion or discretion. It's usually not just looking at them normally. Cause of insomnia in a fairy tale. A pea, as in the princess and the pea. Oh, sleep. Oh, right. That is so true. It only comes to you if you ignore it. Yeah, that's true. So a tool go one day. There we go. That must be the answer. Opposite of da is nyet. So yes and no in uh, Russian. And preach truth, you could say. Whoops, there we go. Reaction to the climax of a heartbreaking movie. 
is end in tears. So it'll end in tears as a phrase, and then the ending tears, the tears at the ending, or the end in tears. Something a PSA lacks, an ad fee. So public service announcement is generally, um, the, the ad time is given for free by the television network or, or radio network or whoever. Without fee, styled like Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock, afroed, so possessing an afro. And 401k alternatives, IRAs, so 401k is a um, U.S. sort of personal, uh, it's a corporate sort of pension plan, and then you could have an IRA, which is a personal pension plan, individual retirement account. To gnaw at is to eat at, and the at in question marks means uh, we're going to apply this word to both the clue and the answer. So, uh, I mean, gnaw and eat, you could see how they relate to one another, but gnaw at and eat at are much a much closer match if you apply at to both. So that's what that's doing there. Concave bodily features, right. Do I still think this is irises? I read, right, I didn't think it did because I didn't think it looked, this didn't look like anything sensible to me. So I removed it. And also I just didn't trust my <laughs> memory of the parts of the eye. Formal organization, still not sure about that. What is that getting at? Oh, the IRS tax forms. I was wondering if if the Al was doing something as well, but it's not really. It just means it's a kind of Al in the sense of a general suffix meaning kind of form related. So the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, deals with quite a few forms. Okay, so what do I think this is? Concave bodily features, innies as an in innies and outies, belly buttons. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. I guess I was thinking of concave and convex incorrectly anyway, with respect to the eye. It would need to be convex, right? So annual indie festival. I don't know what this is. Like all animals in the genus Equus uniquely. One toad? <clears throat> Cause of warming tropical seas. Not sure. Seas and opportunity. Pounce? You could pounce on an opportunity. Stood with... Um, aided? No, nah, it doesn't really work. Um, not sure. Blanket up. Step it up, you could say to somebody. Preppy tops, polo shirts. Listless feeling ennui from the French. And big a big spender, that's a phrase. Oh, Sundance. Oh, indie film. I was thinking of indie music, but Sundance is, is an annual indie film festival. There we go. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's music there as well, but it's certainly known as a film festival. Um, the Robert Redford founded thing. And stood with, you sided with someone, you stood with them, and there we go. That was the Sunday puzzle, and as usual, it is... <laughs> It is the longest solve of the week by a considerable margin. Despite not being, I don't think this was as tricky as the last two days crosswords necessarily, but it is, it is a Sunday puzzle. It's big. And let's go over our theme. It's not, no, no, that's not one. What is the first one? Partner in crime from partnering in crime. Bigamy, legally speaking. Speaking, partner in crime. We have, what else? Enjoying, oh no, we missed one. Here we go. Where copy editors are working is the check checking desk or check-in desk, of course. Um, we have enjoying your meal or I'll be serving you today. The waiting line or wait in line, wait in line. And uh, let's see. Reaction to the climax of a heartbreaking movie is um, end in tears um, from end in tears. The statute regulating surrogacy is mother-in-law. The mother-in-law from uh, mother-in-law, of course. Oops. And let's see what else. Which of these, I'm trying to remember which question mark ones were themes. Uh, Bubbles featuring comic book dialogue is uh, talk in circles from talk in circles. And... One tend, I think this might be the last one. One tendon to reply quickly is the respond in kind from respond in kind. This is very clever. Respond in kind. It's very good. Uh, these are all these are all quite clever actually. Uh, so there we go. A nice solid Sunday crossword with a clever theme and some good some good punny phrases by 
Robert Ryan in his second New York Times crossword. So well done to him and well done to you for sticking with this long episode of the crossword. I do not have time for clues from yesterday's puzzle today. Um, we'll hopefully get back to that tomorrow, but this whole week is going to be a bit tight for me in the morning. So we'll just see how it goes. But uh, in any case, thank you for joining me for another episode of The Daily Solve. I will be back tomorrow, of course, for the simpler Monday crossword, a nice themed, ordinary sized, easy grid. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm-hmm.